Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and today we're driving a 2022 Honda Civic Si in Sonic Gray Pearl. But not just any 2022 Honda Civic Si in Sonic Gray Pearl, this is my Honda Civic Si. I bought this yesterday, and I am so excited to share it with you because I'm actually more thrilled about this than maybe almost any car I've ever bought. And that sounds insane because I've got the M5 and the 911, and those are wonderful, great enthusiast vehicles. Vehicles, but for the first time, I own a car that is fun, reliable, and sporty with a killer six speed manual. And I'm not going to be worried about getting it fixed and having downtime all the time like I did on my E92 M3. So let's just kill the elephant in the room. I don't think that's the saying. I don't think you murder the elephant, but sure, today let's murder the elephant. I traded the E92 M3, and I know that sounds insane to say out loud because what I'm saying is I traded a BMW M3 with an 8600 RPM Redline V8 for a Honda Civic. Yeah, I don't like the sound of that either, except for the fact that the reality of the ownership of a 100,000 plus mile E92 M3 that you're daily driving through New England winters gets old. You live check engine light to check engine light. And it wasn't so much about the cost of maintenance, but the downtime. When you saw me with that Maybach 57, I had that car for like two, three weeks. And it wasn't because I wanted to play with a Maybach. It was because I didn't have a car to drive and I had to use a friend's car. It just happened to be a Maybach, which is pretty cool. But now, you know, we'll, get, we'll, we'll talk about this later. I know you're going to lose your mind in the comment section, but let's focus on the Civic today. I bought this car over a GTI, over an Elantra N, over a lot of other cars that kind of play in this market. Now, the number one thing was the price. This is about $30,000. I mean, it's under $30,000 MSRP. And when it's all said and done, taxes, fees, destination, all that stuff, you're talking about a really killer package for 30 grand. I knew I was going to love this car because I drove the 11th gen Civic Sport and I was blown away by the chassis and the tech and just the simplicity of everything, but how well it drove. So I figured with the Honda Civic Si getting Type R suspension components and it's going to be a little more sports oriented and it's going to have this killer six speed manual transmission, it's probably going to be a winner. I could not get a hold of one of these because I was not invited to any press events. I didn't have any loaner cars and you couldn't find one on a dealer lot to go test drive. So I actually put a lot of faith into my journalist friends to make sure that I was making the correct decision on this one. Getting this car was actually really difficult because they're hard to find. This is like an ultimate supply chain shortage car and McGovern Auto Group helped me out. The McGovern Honda store up in Everett, Massachusetts hooked this up and I've been waiting for this car for a couple months. I wanted Sonic Ray Pearl. They had a red one coming in earlier that they would have let me take, but you know what? I think I made the right move. PTSRS. Will Lee, I think he would approve of this. Now, to prove how new this is, I even just took the window sticker off and I haven't even scraped off all this junk. But let's jump into the interior because sure, these are not leather seats. They don't even have heated seats. Unfortunately, Canada got the better end of the stick on this. But I gotta say, these are very comfortable and I'm kind of thrilled to have my like casual daily driver have just simple cloth seats. Interior in this car is phenomenal. I'm quite psyched about how adult everything is in this car. The 10th gen Civic was a little bonkers. It was a little bananas. Everything was everywhere. It looks like an anime character's hairstyle. The exterior of this car looks much more like an Audi A3 in my opinion. And the interior of this car actually gets the stuff that I wish Germany was doing. We don't have crazy touch screens and buttons everywhere. We do have a touch screen here, but you know, my HVAC controls, nice jewelry type switches and knobs. They're knurled. They feel really good in the hand. Our HVAC controls here. I don't, it's not like a Tesla where I've got to go and like aim it on a screen. That's absurd. I've got wireless Apple CarPlay and I have comfort access in the car. So I don't really ever need to touch these buttons in the start. Jumps to life, clutch interlock. So yes, I am gonna be hitting that clutch pedal to start the car. I know some people get like freaked out. They're like, oh, it's not good for the throwout bearing. Sorry guys, you gotta just you gotta just accept the safety features, okay? So the heart of this little beast is a 1.5 liter 
four-cylinder turbo, the same 1.5 liter that was used in the previous generation of the Civic Si. So no big surprises there. It's a very quiet little engine and appears to be fairly serviceable because I have such great access to these coil packs and spark plugs, not that I anticipate having to really work on my Honda, but I actually find this to be a charming little engine bay. Now, there's still salt on the roads right now. We're gonna do a proper detail, probably down at Craft Detailing to do a paint correction. And I would also like to get a clear bra on at least the front and the rocker panels. I also need to find a solution for the front plate because I don't want to drill into the front bumper. That is not the move. And another thing you'll notice up front is that we don't have fog lights. The Canadian market car got better options. They got fog lights. They got heated steering wheel, heated seats, heated rear seats. I think that's the real kicker for me because the Canadian car is objectively better. We've got these killer 18 inch black wheels with 235 section tires all around. My first square setup car that isn't a track thing. So I'm excited because I'm gonna be able to rotate tires. Oh, the savings. So while these people drive by looking at me like I'm a crazy person, because you know what? I am a crazy person. Let's go take a ride. I am a little disappointed that I have this parking brake switch. I do wish I had a hand parking brake, a handbrake, a handbrake, yes, a handbrake, because then we could do lots of winter slides. That is something I will miss, but maybe we'll get another rear wheel drive toy for the winter. All right, the driving experience of this car, I am, I'm, it has exceeded all of my expectations. You know, originally when I was looking for like, you know what, I'm gonna get like a normal daily driver that I can just drive and never have to think about and just do like, you know, oil changes and the oil changes will be cheap as hell because it'll be like 4.8 liters of 0W20 or something I can find at Walmart instead of the insanity of like 8.8 .8 liters of oil from FCP Euro, which is great. FCP Euro is fantastic, but like it does, you know, it's, it's a lot in that BMW to be, to be doing that every 5,000 miles. Well, then when this SI came out, I was like, well, we gotta go with the more fun option. First thing I noticed is this shifter. Guys, this is good. Porsche and Honda. Isn't that crazy? Porsche and Honda are the leaders in the game of shift feel at this point. And I just spent, you know, maybe 300 miles in the, the new 718 Spider with the demand re-geared transmission. And I gotta say, I thought like, oh no, I'm now adapted to a Porsche shifter. I'm gonna get in my Honda in a couple of days when it comes in and I'm gonna be disappointed. I, I, guys, I'm not. Like, I'm really shocked by how good this is. Honda is clearly being built by people who like cars. This car was clearly assembled and designed by people who want a good driving experience. And looks can be deceiving because, you know, you've got the reputation of being a Honda Civic. We've got that fast and furious reputation. We've got kind of like, oh, well, it's boring. It's the, it, it's kind of like the poor man's enthusiast car or just like the every man's car. That's fine with me because this is excellent to drive. It weighs 2,900 pounds. That weight, that's a number you just can't lie about. When you have a low, a lightweight car, something that's like at 3,000 or just below, it really shows in the driving experience. And, and it's clear that they've taken a lot of lessons from the previous gen Honda Civic Type R and, and injected them into this SI. I'm quite excited about the new Type R, the new 11th gen Type R. There's my, it's saying lane keep assist. It's trying to warn me. I gotta start turning off these nannies because that's the thing. I, I'm not used to this stuff. That does drive me a little nuts. I, I've never owned a car with a backup camera. I've never owned a car with Apple CarPlay or a touch screen or anything like that. So I am entering the future, or as Will Lee said, welcome to civilization. But, oh, doggy, be careful with the doggy. But anyway, it's clear that Honda has learned a lot from the previous gen type R and I'm excited about the next generation. And this may just be a placeholder for that. Like if I like this car that much, I might just place my order for the next generation type R. A coincidental benefit of this car is that gas prices just went absolutely crazy. We're at like $5 a gallon here in Massachusetts, six or seven in California. And this happens to get 37 to 40 miles per gallon. Like I genuinely could not be more excited on the timing of the arrival of this car. It makes me look really smart. I promise, purely accidental. I did not, uh, I did not predict 
a war with Russia and Ukraine. That was uh, was not a Ted word foresight, okay? But I did know that I wanted a car that got better than, let's say, 20 miles per gallon, which is the life I've been living because the cars I own, I've got two V8s. I've got the, I had the M3, the M5, and then the Porsche. The Porsche and M5 do not go out in the winter. So, you know, either way, I don't have anything that gets more than like 23, 24 miles per gallon at best. Crossing double yellows in the Oldsmobile, gotta send it, man. You may notice that I'm not really pushing this car because I want to break it in properly. I think Honda recommends about 600 miles of break-in miles. Now, it's not like make or break life or death if you were to, you know, get into the throttle a little bit. But, you know, in, in the spirit of taking care of my things and making sure that I don't have, like, oil consumption issues down the line, which I don't think is really an issue with these cars, but I am going to treat it well. So I'm going to try to drive this as much as possible in the next week or two just to get those miles racked up so then we can go really thrash it. Oof, these roads are not good. But that's why I gifted myself a wheel and tire package from McGovern because I actually, I, I know I know that there's a huge possibility I blow out a wheel and a tire on Boston potholes. It's bad out here, okay? And I don't really wanna be paying for my wheels. So this allows me to use the car how I want and uh, kind of beat the shit out of it and not worry so much. This, I can't wait to rev this out because I can tell this differential is going to be a good time. I am so blown away already just by the handling characteristics of this thing. Where are you going, man? I've got the auto rev matching on right now. Not usually something I do, but it's kind of fun to play with and I wanted to see how well it works. It works phenomenally well. And I wish, I just wish that there was a button right here to turn it on and off because it is often something that you want and don't want on the fly. All right, let's take a little corner here. It's just insane how easy it is to chuck this thing into a corner. It's so much fun. And like, I know guys, it's a Honda Civic, but here's the thing I wanted to prove with this car to myself and maybe to my viewers. And it was a bit of a risk because I had to spend the money to do it. But I wanted to prove that you don't need to spend $100,000 or $75,000 on a car to have fun in it. You don't need the M car. You don't need the Audi S line. You don't need an AMG to have a good time. Like, can you buy an affordable, economical car, save the manuals at the same time and enjoy yourself? I think I've proven to myself the answer is yes. You know, I need a little more time with it and I can't wait to really rev it out and get a vibe for it. But right now, I think I'm I'm like excited to drive. I woke up this morning and I could not wait to get in this car. I haven't felt that way in a really long time. Sure, I get excited when I'm gonna go do a video on like a GT2 RS or something, but I don't own those cars. I don't have them sitting in my driveway waiting and staring at me like, hey, if you wanna drive it, it's right here, go for it. This is a totally wild thing. Like, I feel like I'm 16 again. I feel like I'm staring out into my driveway thinking like, ooh, I, I, I could go drive that right now. I could go have some fun. And that is incredible that in 2022, with 200 horsepower, a six-speed manual front-wheel drive car can be this good. I'm thrilled. I'm so thrilled and I hope that that shines through. We're gonna do a lot more videos on this car just because it deserves it. I can tell based on like where I am in the throttle that this turbo takes a little bit of time to spool, which is fine. I'm not that concerned. And this is also my first turbo car that I've ever owned. Now this suspension, it's a little stiff, but it's a little stiff relative to like normal cars and I have been daily driving a BMW M3 for the last six years. So to me, this actually feels fairly normal. This isn't, this isn't the big jump. Now it doesn't have electronic dampers. We don't have any of that fancy stuff. We do however have like drive modes where you can go from sport, normal to individual. There's really not a whole lot of adjustability here you get heavier steering uh, and a little bit sharpened throttle response, I think. But like that's, I think that's the extent of it. I don't think anything's really changing that much. And that's fine. Um, I don't even really prefer the heavier steering. I think it's better just to leave it in, in normal mode. But I think they've done a really good job 
with the suspension tuning, you know, they went on the sportier side of stiff, but I don't think they went so crazy that it's going to jar your teeth out and, 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 and send a strut through the upright, you know, like you don't want to do any of that stuff, but it's definitely, it's definitely sporty. the all seasons this thing really boogies it's a good time like I gotta say for a car that is designed to be like the everyman's sub $30,000 thing it is really enthusiast driven like I I, I, oh man I, I hope I can communicate this in a way that doesn't make me sound biased because like I bought the car but I'm like genuinely having a good time. A little bit of rev hang, and I think I'm gonna experience that more in the higher revs once we've got it broken in. But, you know, not as much of a buzzkill as I kind of anticipated. And these all seasons are doing a pretty good job. There's not a ton of grip, but there's enough. Oh man, the way this thing just gets around a corner. Suspension tuning, man, this is what it's all about. Honda, Honda, Honda. I like you guys more every day. So look, I know as an automotive YouTuber, I should be coming out with video titles like my new paint to sample GT3 Touring or I bought the cheapest Lambo in the country. I, no, that's not me. That's not my life. That's not my style. Uh, it, I am somebody who wants to have fun in cars. I don't want to ruin my life by buying something that I can barely afford. I want to drive things that entertain me and I can afford to park in a parking lot and not stress about. Like, I want to be able to park this on the street. I want to be able to go places. I want to be able to put thousands of miles on something without thinking, oh no, can I afford the depreciation? I don't want to live that life. And if I had a lot of money, like a lot of money, maybe I would live that life. Maybe that's what I would do. Maybe I would go buy myself a Ferrari FF and, and daily drive it and just be okay with the fact that it's going to need the occasional $10,000 service. Sure, I'm not that guy. And I'm also not going to try to pretend to be that guy. I don't do the posturing thing. You know, my whole deal is, is reality. It's a reality check on my channel. And I wanna show that an adult can have fun for $30,000 and still be a car enthusiast. And, and it was a gamble. So far, I feel like I'm winning the gamble. I feel like I won the bet. Love the way this thing turns in. You get a little bit of slip from that rear end. Everything just feels so composed. And what's wild is just how rigid this chassis feels. Like it really, I mean, it's blowing my mind that this is what essentially an entry level enthusiast vehicle is now because this feels like I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine how much this would cost if I tried to get this experience many years ago as a kid in the early 2000s. This would be, you know, BMW M stuff, really. I mean, that's, that's, that's no joke. So I think that's gonna do it for our first drive in my new car. I hope, I hope you're not too mad at me. For, for unloading a BMW M3 for a Honda Civic. I understand, I'm saying the words out loud, I hear them, I get it. But I hope you can understand the practical reasons behind that and not wanting to live check engine light to check engine light in a, an aging German sports car. 
it is tiring and eventually you've just got to call it. So thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Please leave your comments, thoughts, anger. Well, don't leave too much anger. I don't really need that. But let me know what you think. Um, I'm going to go quietly jump off the highway in my new Honda. Don't forget to respect the drive and I'll see you in the next one. So what about the aftermarket? What are we gonna do to this car? I actually think the only thing I'm gonna do to this car is throw a stickier set of tires on it. I don't feel the need to really modify this car. The only thing that I may do is once I drive the Acuity Shifter, make a decision if I wanna change it. Cause I know that the boys uh, like Russ and Powen over at Acuity are working on a new shifter for the 11th gen SI and you know, they really improved the shifter on the 10th gen. The thing was though, the 10th gen, I think needed the improvement. This car is actually pretty impressive as it sits. So I'm not sure what they're gonna do, but I'm quite excited about it. What I like about this car too, is just this chassis is so neutral. I've chucked it into some corners already. And I mean, I'm just so impressed. With, with like the balance, you know, it doesn't feel like an Econo car. It really does feel like they wanted this to be able to be hooned around. And, and I think it's gonna be a bit of a sleeper. I think this is one of those cars where there's gonna be somebody in a faster car, whether it's like an M car or something, you know, that would be that would be appropriate, who, who's gonna try to chase me off an on-ramp or an off-ramp. And I feel like I can get away. I, I actually feel like I can just hang this on the ragged edge and get away with it.